Today I've got a pretty nice problem. So our goal is to find all natural numbers m so that the square root of m plus the square root of m plus 7, where we have that embedding of square roots, is also a natural number. Okay, so let's maybe see how this can go. So we're going to start with the kind of basic way of rewriting this. So we'll rewrite this as the square root of m plus the square root of m plus 7 equals n. And so that little n is, well, it's the natural number that this expression is equal to. And now we'll use the fact that generally it's easier to work with squares than it is with square roots to get rid of these square roots by squaring both sides of this equation. So let's see what we get when we square both sides of the equation. That'll leave us with, with something like m plus the square root of m plus 7 equals n squared. And still, we've got another square root left in this situation that we'd probably like to get rid of. And we can do that by moving some things around. Notice this means that the square root of m plus 7 is the same thing as n squared minus m just by moving some things around. And now we can finally square one more time to leave us with m plus 7 equals n squared minus m quantity squared. Now we can multiply this out. What, we, what will we get if we multiply this out? We'll get m squared and then minus 2mn squared and then finally plus n to the fourth. Okay, good. So let's maybe underline that in blue. We have this equation m plus 7 equals m squared minus 2mn squared plus n to the fourth. And now we're going to, instead of having this solved for n, which has this nested root, we will solve it for m, which will not have a nested root because notice if we view m as the variable, then this is just a quadratic equation. So keeping that in mind, we're going to move some things around. Let's write this as m squared plus minus 2n squared minus 1 times m. So that's just taking the coefficient of m from this left-hand side and the coefficient of m from this right-hand side and then putting them on both the same sides of the equation. So the coefficient of m here is minus 2n squared. And now let's note that the constant term when moving things around will be n to the fourth minus 7, and we have this is equal to 0. So this is just reorganizing these things. And we're reorganizing it like this so we can use the quadratic formula. So nothing super fancy has happened yet. So the quadratic formula says that this is 1 half, and then we'll have negative the coefficient of the linear term, so that'll give us 2n squared plus 1, and then plus minus the square root of, well, the linear term squared. But if we square this, we'll get 4n to the fourth, and then plus 4n squared plus 1, keeping in mind that the square will get rid of those negatives. And then we have to subtract 4 times a times c, so that would be 4 times this coefficient here and this constant. So that gives us negative 4n to the fourth plus 28. Okay, nice. But now we get some simplification within that radical. We can cancel this 4n to the fourth with this 4n to the fourth. And then furthermore, we can add 1 with 28. And that gives us a nice expression for m. So we have m is 1 half, and then we'll have 2n squared plus 1 plus minus the square root of 4n squared plus 29. So in order for m to be a natural number, which we want m to be a natural number, we know that we must have this stuff within our radical be equal to a perfect square. So let's write that over here. So we need 4n squared plus 29 to be a perfect square. Okay, nice.
And now we're gonna play this game of bounding 4n squared plus 29 between a couple of obvious perfect squares to reduce the number of possibilities. So let's start with the perfect square 2n quantity squared. So that's 4n squared after you multiply it out, obviously. This is strictly less than 4n squared plus 29 because we're adding 29, but that is strictly less than 4n squared plus 32 because 32 is bigger than 29. And now the trick here is to rewrite this as 4n squared plus 16n plus 16. And there we get an inequality that is a not strict inequality because n could be one in this case where we would get equality. And now we're writing it like that because that's in fact a perfect square binomial. This is equal to 2n plus 4 quantity squared. So let's see what we've got. We've got our expression, which I'm putting here in pink, is strictly between 2n quantity squared and 2n plus 4 quantity squared. Well, there are only three perfect squares between those two perfect squares. And that tells us that our number, our 4n squared plus 29, must be one of those. So it must either be 2n plus 1 squared, 2n plus 2 squared, or 2n plus 3 squared. So that'll set up three equations that we could solve that will hopefully help us figure out possible values of n. And let's do that now. So on the last board, we determined m in terms of n, and also we showed that 4n squared plus 29 must be the certain square of one of three binomials. And we're going to check two cases. I'll leave that third case for you. So in fact, we showed that this 4n squared plus 29 was either 2n plus 1 squared, 2n plus 2 squared, or 2n plus 3 squared. And that's the one I'm leaving as a little bit of a homework exercise to see if we get a solution out of that. Okay, so let's work through these. Let's start with case 2. So if we have 4n squared plus 29 equal to 2n squared plus 2, we can expand that right-hand side, leaving us with 4n squared plus 8n plus 4. So we get some nice simplification here. The 4n squared cancels the 4n squared, and we're left with 8n equals 25. But let's see, that does not give us a solution because our solution would be n equals 25 over eight, but that is not a natural number. That's a rational number. Now you could check if that rational number actually gives us a solution for m that we could use, but I won't do that here. I'll let you guys think about that if you want to. So just to reiterate, if we allow n to be a rational number, does that give us a final solution for m? Okay, so now let's look at this first case, which you can probably guess that we do get a solution out of this. So expanding will leave us with 4n squared plus 29 equal to 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. Again, we can cancel the 4n squared from both sides, leaving us with 4n equals 28, meaning that n is equal to 7. So good, 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 we've got a value for n. And so that's the value here for the only natural number that this can take or that this expression can take the value of. Okay, well, at least when we're taking m to be a natural number itself. Okay, so now let's see which values of m this corresponds to. And we have two possible values based off of this plus or this minus. So let's work on the plus first, and we'll work on the minus second. So this will be like plus case and minus case. Okay, so for our plus case, we'll have m is equal to one half, 
And then this is gonna be two times 49, which is 98 plus one. So that'll be 99 and then plus. So it may seem kind of gnarly to work that out, but in fact, it's not too hard at all because we know in this case, this is equal to two n plus one quantity squared. But the square and the square root will cancel, leaving us with just two n plus one or the number 15. So that's our solution in this case. But let's see, 99 plus 15 is 114 divided by two is 57. So that's our possible value of M here. But now let's check if that works by plugging it into our original expression. Because since we squared along the way to getting the solution, we have possibly introduced some extraneous solutions that are not actually solutions. So let's do 57 plus the square root of 57 plus seven. Okay, so 57 plus seven is 64. The square root of 64 is eight, so we're off to a good start. But now we have the square root of 57 plus eight left, which is equal to the square root of 65, which is not a natural number. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that this M equals 57 is not a good solution. So that moves on to the minus. Hopefully we get a solution out of that. Everything here will be the same except we have a minus sign. So we'll have m is equal to 1 half and then 99 minus 15. So let's see, 99 minus 15 is 84 divided by 2 is 42. So we get m equals 42. A pretty popular number on the internet. So now let's see if that works. So we'll have the square root of 42 plus the square root of 42 plus seven. So this inner 42 plus seven will give us 49. Square root of 49 is equal to seven. And so that leaves us with another square root of 42 plus seven, which is the square root of 49 again, which gives us seven. So this is in fact a solution. Now that being said, looking at this again, I think I know what went wrong. So this 57 plus seven totally worked out to give us eight here. But if we had 57 minus eight in this case, that would give us the square root of 49. And that square root of 49 would be seven. But that would have required there being a minus sign here, which I'll put in purple. And that minus sign solution was kind of introduced when we squared both sides of the equation, let's see, right here. So that's where we got that extraneous solution. Okay, so if you've gotten this far, maybe think about subscribing if you haven't done that yet. We have interesting videos at lots of different levels every day. And you can even check out the second channel, Math Major, if you'd like lecture videos, if you're still a student. And that's a good place to stop.